Assalamualaikum everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ali and uh, today we're talking about a guide to standing out in a competitive job market. Today is day two of the seminar where we're going to be focusing on LinkedIn, leveraging your LinkedIn with connections from both your personal and professional life and how to get ahead leveraging that social media platform. So just a quick agenda before we go ahead and get started. I'm going to be talking a little bit about social media tips. We're going to be talking about the benefits of LinkedIn, structuring a LinkedIn profile. We're going to be talking a little bit about relationship management, how to leverage your current connections, using LinkedIn messaging to build connections and also leverage that into an employment opportunity, um, setting up an introductory call to further leverage that opportunity, what content you should be posting on LinkedIn. And we're going to be touching a little bit in detail today about how to work with recruiters that we touched on briefly yesterday. So we'll go ahead and we'll jump in. So we'll talk about social media tips. So a couple things to consider when we're using social media, specifically as it relates to your professional image. So you want to be very careful of how you control your image and what's represented online. So definitely review your online presence. How do you appear on Facebook, YouTube, your blog? Remove anything that could be potentially damaging to your rep reputation. Alhamdulillah, at Council, uh, we have uh, we have very bright children here and uh, and young adults so you guys are, are very great at uh, managing your your image and your reputation so that's always great for future posts remember that anything you post might be accessed by others in the future my sincere recommendation at all times to anyone is regardless of whether or not you're applying for a job or an opportunity is you want to privatize your accounts make sure only those that you're willing to let see um, whatever you're posting are the ones that are taking a look uh, you want to make sure you're communicating in a professional manner. Now, what that means is each interaction with your network or potential employers is a demonstration and potential evaluation of your communication skills. You need to maintain a professional language at all times. You need to respond to emails promptly within a timely manner. And be careful not to communicate too frequently with a little bit too minutiae as this can be perceived as needy. So what you want to do is you want to make sure as much as you're interested in working there, they're also interested in having you work there. So be careful of what you're doing, um, play it safe. Remember it's a two-way process. They're interviewing you as much as you're interviewing them. Uh, specifically use Twitter as well. So employers oftentimes will post job opportunities on their Twitter pages. Investigate whether your ideal employers have Twitter handles to follow and if they post any job opportunities there. Uh, a lot of software organizations and tech firms do use Twitter quite frequently in addition to LinkedIn as well. Also consider searching for handles dedicated to internship postings. If you're looking for an internship, something that your school might have is a career office or a career preparation office. Definitely use those resources. They'll oftentimes have internships, summer jobs, and other opportunities posted there as well for alumni even. And lastly, be active on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn has become the preferred professional networking site for both employers and employees. Make sure you create an account and keep it updated. Employers use LinkedIn quite frequently to vet for candidates further, so make it look professional. I know for a fact, whenever you apply for any of the tech firms, your hiring manager will take a quick look at your profile just to see what you were doing previously, if it lines up with your resume, and how you present yourself online. Because once you're employed, you're also a direct representation of the organization you'll be employed at. So quickly moving ahead, talking about the benefits of LinkedIn. So each month, nearly 260 million users will visit LinkedIn. What LinkedIn does is it provides an online professional presence. So not something like your Twitter or your Instagram will. This is strictly for professional purposes. It contains content from your resume, your cover letter, and references. And for others to see that uh, it is a networking site that allows you to also make new professional connections as well. It also contains access to job listings. A lot of jobs are posted. I posted a screenshot below of uh, an account executive role in Canada. As you can see, there's a couple of open options that were posted. It lets you know how many views there were, um, when it was posted, what they're looking for, uh, what the seniority level might be, and what the organization looks like as well. It also lets you know if any of your current connections work there, or if there's any alumni from your school that you can tap into. Now, it also contain, LinkedIn, of course, also will contain a lot of information for research that we just talked about, either for on companies or people. And uh, it even has a job student portal. So you can take a look at that at linkedin.com slash student jobs. Another great thing about LinkedIn is you will have your own private dashboard that is available for you on your profile. It'll let you know how many people have viewed your profile in a week. 
It'll tell you how many views your posts will have on average. It'll also let you know if you've appeared for any searches. Now, recruiters and a lot of employers will typically use LinkedIn. About 90% of the candidates that they have will be searched through from LinkedIn. So it'll let you know if you were included in the search as well. Jumping on ahead, let's talk about how to structure your LinkedIn profile. So the first and foremost thing you need to do is make sure your full legal name is on there, create a strong headline, use a professional photo and list your education. So I've listed a couple examples on the screen here. First and foremost, there's mine. So it lists my first and last name. It lists my title and the organization I'm currently working at. And it also lists the school that I went to for education. In addition, you can also narrow down and specify what your geographic area is as well. In addition to that, I have one of my former colleagues from SAP, Wayne Powell. He's a development architect at SAP. So he talks about his role there, his organization, and the fact that he went to the University of Waterloo. I have a couple other examples here I'll touch on briefly. We have Azar Zafar, who is, uh, in his title, he's actually listed his professional designations of CPA, CA, and a CFA. He's currently a director of investment risk private markets at OP Trust, and uh, he works on the investment committee of the Princess Margaret Foundation. He's also founder and president of Muslim Wars of Excellence. He lists that he also attended University of Waterloo. And lastly, we have a personal friend of mine. His name is Naveed Shahabadi. He's the manager of market development at SAP Concur for the small and medium business segment in Canada. And it's listed that that's where he works, as well as the fact that he's at attended Brock University previously for his education. Now make sure you include your activities and in your involvement within your education. If you have a strong GPA, you should consider listing that as well. So under your education, we have a few examples here of someone who's just posted that they went to Brock University, the years that they attended, and what degree they received, which is a BSM, a Bachelor of Sports Management. Another example is uh, someone who attended Ontario Tech University, formerly UOIT, they attended between the years of 2013 to 2017 for a Bachelor of Arts in Criminology and Justice. They listed some activities they were involved in, how they were a delegate for a DECA U, their operations manager for the Student Law Association and a few other things. And lastly, we have someone else who attended a MBA program at the Ted Rogers University, Ryerson University. Talks about how they were part of the MBA games or vice president of communications for the MBA Student Association. Uh, a lot of involvement there. They talked about how they received a couple certifications from BrainStation uh, when they attended and of course what they did there. And also talked about how their undergraduate was also at Ryerson University where they received a Bachelor's of Commerce with Business and Marketing, their overall GPA of 3.0, and the GPA of the last 16 courses was 3.375. In addition to that, they also listed they were involved in activities and societies such as Enactus and Start Me Up Ryerson. When you're also structuring your LinkedIn, you definitely want to include any honors courses, organizations you may have been involved in within your education. Also list any projects, whether they were involved or not within your education. So on one side, we have uh, you know someone who's listed six honors and awards, talking about a marketing excellence award, employee of the month, award for academic excellence, highest honors, uh, dean's honors as well. A couple of the relevant courses they might have taken, such as grammar, stylistics, uh, social marketing, and strategic business management. Also, what languages they speak and an organization that they were involved in. On the other side, we have somebody who's listed 16 courses, a majority of the courses that they've taken during their undergraduate program, the four honors and awards they've received over their, their tenure there, three organizations that they were involved in, two projects that they were involved in, and the, the language that they most commonly speak. So this all leads into creating content for your LinkedIn. Make sure you have enough there to entice your employers, to make sure that you're a well-rounded candidate who's not only involved within your current organization and at school, but also what you do outside of your professional life as well. What you want to be doing when you're structuring your LinkedIn is listing your experience in a similar PAR structure as your resume. Now we talked about that a little bit yesterday. A PAR stands for project, activity, and results. So on one side, we have someone who was a marketing associate at BrightSpark in the Toronto, Canada area. So they talked about they were involved in BrightSpark. The activities they were doing was designing an organization of email workflows and campaigns to increase user engagement and reduce churn. In one sentence, they captured there the project that they were involved in, the activity they were doing, and the re direct results of that said activity. 
They went on to further quantify that a little bit with actual numbers. They talk about the execution of social media content and planning on LinkedIn and Twitter, increasing followers by 13 and 23%. Now that is a direct number. It's a quantifiable result of the activity they were doing on the project they were involved in. And it captures it quite beautifully. Another thing to mention is you should always include all the roles that you had within that organization so you can show that you had progression through your career. Uh, so on the left hand side here we have a screenshot of SAP. This is from my profile. I talked about how I first started as a market development representative, uh, the time I spent there from January 2019 to January 2020, what I was involved in, where I had my focus, employee numbers, things of that nature, and talking a little bit about what Concur was. And then moving on uh, to the next role I had at SAP between the time of January 2020 and October 2020 as a client engagement associate in the consumer travel group. So I listed the project I was on, the activities I was doing was working with cross-functional business units, leading market research and competitive intelligence and providing strategic recommendations to drive end user adoption, talking about the results that would come from that activity. So that's a little bit about how you want to structure each statement in your LinkedIn experience profile section. Uh, it has to reflect similarly to, to what you have in your resume because it'll be cross-referenced later by employers as well. Make sure you include all your volunteer experiences relevant to your role. So on the right hand side, or rather on the left hand side here, I've listed my volunteer experience. So I've worked as a corporate relationship manager for the Muslim Wars for Excellence. I was an engaged ambassador at SAP, and I was also a youth mentor and keynote speaker for Junior Achievement Worldwide for about a year and a half. That's listed there as well. On the left side, we have somebody who had a little bit of volunteer experience in security for the FIFA U20 World Cup and how they were also involved in the Women's Volleyball National uh, Nations League volunteer. Uh, between the time periods that are involved, that's listed there on the screen as well. So anything that you have that's relevant to your desired role or your current role, definitely list it. If you think it can make an impact with what you're doing, you should most definitely be listing it on LinkedIn. Definitely create a professional summary as well. This is often the first thing that someone will take a look at on your profile. And this is, of course, your LinkedIn equivalent of an elevator pitch. And we talked about an elevator pitch a little bit yesterday. It's a quick 30 second introduction into who you are, what you do. Uh, so the first one here, it talks about how they're an experienced sales consultant with a demonstrated history of working in the technology industry. They're skilled in sales, communication, team building, and public speaking. Strong business development professional with a Bachelor of Arts focused in criminology and justice from the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. So it talks about their past experience, what they're most skilled in, and where they went to school. The second one is driven marketer with a heart for authentic relationship building, a passion for creating memorable experiences, and an unwavering curiosity for the constantly evolving digital world. And that shows their current role, what they're involved in and what they're passionate about and how they help achieve it. Now, the biggest part about LinkedIn is you can leverage your current relationships that you have within uh, your personal life as well. So leverage your existing relationships from your school or from your personal network. Definitely connect with them on LinkedIn to see the relevant posts from their uh, organizations. Now we have Uncle Ajaz Heather from Council, who is actually, uh, he's, a, he's a senior leader at uh, SOTI, which is a software organization, and he leads the DevOps team there. He posted about a month ago about um, someone who was a technical sourcing specialist at his organization who was hiring for a senior DevOps engineer position uh, he posted that because they were hiring directly for their team. Now, as you can see, uh, right next to his name, it comes up as first. That means I'm a first degree connection with him. I have him added on my LinkedIn. Therefore, I was able to see that he posted this when he did. This is great because if you are in that field and if you're looking for that job, oftentimes, not only will you be able to see it, you'll be able to reach out to Uncle Ajaz, let him know that that's something you're interested in and potentially get a conversation going as well. Two other gentlemen I've listed here on the other side of the screen are Sayed Mohammed Rizvi. He's a corporate lawyer at Davies Ward Phillips and Weinberg LLP. He actually just moved there, so congratulations on the new role. And beneath that, it lists how we have 48 mutual connections. And the other one is, uh, of course, Brother Nabil. His headline is, he's seeking internship opportunities for the summer 2021, and he's a nuclear engineering student. He went to school at Ontario Tech University. Again, his, uh, his LinkedIn headline is very concise, it's very to the point, and it shows exactly what he's looking for. 
So Nabil, great job with that. If you're watching, you don't need this. But again, it talks about how there's 67 mutual connections between him and I, just talking a little bit about, uh, again, a lot of these names that you might recognize are people from council. These are people from our personal networks that we've added on LinkedIn, just to be able to stay in touch and see if anything comes up as well. Definitely leverage the current connections you have. So use your existing LinkedIn connections in case of any open roles. Connect with them with their posts to build report as well. So we'll talk about that a little bit more on how to use content within LinkedIn. But at the current moment, uh, I have a screenshot of actually someone that I had reached out to when I was looking for a new role as well. So it was a buddy of mine named Brandon. And I reached out to him. I said, hey, Brandon, hope everything's been well. I saw your post regarding open sales roles at ADP and wanted to learn a little bit more about the application process. Did you have a few minutes to walk me through how to best apply for the role? Now, notice I didn't exactly ask him directly to refer me to that role. And I directly quoted something he had already posted, what it was about the topic and why I'm reaching out to him. So that's what you wanna be doing when you're reaching out to your, to your connections is be very concise and be precise about what it is that you want from them. Don't be afraid to ask them for what you want. Definitely don't beat around the bush. So he replied back to me actually four minutes later and he let me know, hey, Ali, hope you're doing well. For sure, man, I will give you a call in 30 minutes. What's the best number to reach you? And I let him know that was my number. Anyone who can see that on the screen, please don't prank call me. In addition to that, we have somebody I used to work with at Concur, whose name is Turner. Uh, we both are no longer at SAP Concur. We've actually moved on to better roles. Uh, so he was talking about, hi, Ali, saw you moved onwards and upwards from Concur. Congratulations on the new gig. I also just started at my company and I've been reaching out to my network to see what they think of our new tool. Uh, so that was just him trying to sort of reach out to me to see what, uh, do a temperature check, if you will. But he leveraged the fact that we both worked at a prior organization and we both moved on to new roles and just wanted to reconnect and see how things were, uh, in addition to leveraging um, a sort of sales approach into looking at the tool he's currently working with. Now, let's talk about using LinkedIn messaging. So similar to how I reached out to Brandon and similar to how Turner reached out to me, we want to use LinkedIn messaging to create an opening into any opportunity to see if we can move our way and put essentially our foot in the door for an organization. Why we're doing that is because we want to build an internal champion and a reference within that organization that can vouch for us when it comes time to interview. As we all know, nepotism runs the world and that is the best way to get hired. So step one, identify the company you wanna work at. As an example, let's call it company A. Step one is to type company A into LinkedIn search engine click the link. It might say, see all 84 employees on LinkedIn. It might say, see all 84,000 employees on LinkedIn. What you can do is you can further filter that with step two. So on the right side, you can filter people. I definitely suggest starting with this. You can check if you have any people that are currently your first or second degree connections. So first degree, of course, will be people that are in your network that you've added on LinkedIn. And your second degree connections will be people that may be connected to other people that you know. You can also see if you have any fellow alumni from your old education that you might be willing to help you out, you can reach out to as well. I found that fellow alumni are usually pretty easy going when you let them know you attended the same school or a similar program, and they are definitely willing to help you out. Barring that, you can find someone who's a talent acquisition specialist. Now, talent acquisition teams are purpose-built to backfill roles that are currently open. So what they'll do is they'll go out and actively find people, not just through uh, having a post on, uh, on anywhere or just an open slot on monster or indeed.com. These people will actually act as in-house recruiters and they'll go out and try and identify the best talent and poach them. You could also look for HR directors or anyone with a title that might suggest he or she is a hiring manager. As an example, uh, going back to my friend, Naveed, who is the market development manager at SMB, uh, SAP concur for the SMB segment, he's the one who's going to be hiring and making that decision at the end of the day for who's coming on his team. So while you might have to speak to HR and talent acquisition, it's his call at the end of the day as to who he's inviting to his team. So find someone also who's in the department you want to work at. Start with the company website to see who's on those teams. If you can't find them, definitely go back to LinkedIn. Type those names into LinkedIn. Find that connection. Now, once you've found a connection or you know six or seven, depending on how much you want the job, you can send them a version of this message. So, hi, hiring manager. I'm a recent Ryerson graduate, just returned from teaching English in Thailand, 
and I'm now pursuing writing opportunities, particularly in the marketing industry. I'm writing to you to ask if you'd be willing to speak to me about your career path, company A, and your experience as a, career, a copywriter. Thank you, and I look forward to hearing from you. Best, Imad. Sorry, Imad, I had to throw your name in there, but that's all right. Why we're sending this type of message is one, you're identifying that you're a recent graduate or you're somebody who's currently in school. Two, you're talking about your experience, what you're currently doing. And you're also telling them three, why you're reaching out to them, what industry you're looking for, why you reached out to them, why it's relevant is because you're looking for writing opportunities in marketing. That'll typically be someone who's a copywriter. This person here is now a hiring manager and he was a copywriter, no doubt. Uh, he or she started at the, the bottom of the, uh, the ladder, so to speak. So why do we send this type of message? We'll talk about that in a little bit. But here's a couple more examples of sort of how to, to structure your messaging. So someone here named Salim had reached out to me. He said, hi, Ali. It's great to connect with a successful member of the team at SAP Concur. He's identified that SAP Concur was hiring at the time. So he said, I know that SAP Concur is hiring and I'm interested in becoming part of your team. Since you've been with SAP Concur for one year, I'd love to get your thoughts. Would you be open to answering three to five quick questions? It'd be highly appreciated. So one, he wasn't afraid to ask me what he wanted. He didn't beat around the bush, but at the same time, he did it tactfully. He didn't just ask me for a reference. He asked what my thoughts were working for that organization. He did this so he can vet out whether that's an organization he wants to get involved in, in the first place. So I said, hi, Salim, that sounds great. Why don't you give me a ring tomorrow? What time works for you? Now we'll revisit this conversation with Salim in a little bit where we're gonna be talking about setting up an introductory call. But there's another example of a LinkedIn message uh, with Carol Ann Vance. She's the director of talent acquisition at a organization called Meltwater which is a software firm for public relations purposes. So I reached out to her and said, hey, Carol, hope everything's been well. I saw your post regarding new sales positions at Meltwater. I'd be very interested in a role with your Toronto office. I have nearly six years of experience, including new business development, account management, and full cycle sales. Please let me know if there's any open positions that you're currently hiring for. Cheers. She reached out to me again and she said, hi, Ali, we have a key account manager role that you'd be a good fit. If you email me your resume, Happy to put you in touch with someone to learn more. Alternatively, submitting your resume through our website is easier and it comes through to me. So I said, thanks, Carol. I sent my application in. Later, we connected and I learned the rule. Wasn't quite what I was looking for, but nonetheless, that's an opportunity to get your foot in the door, talk to her. Why I sent a message like that? Well, I saw her post regarding new open positions and specifically said, message me to learn a little bit more. So I did. I let her know why I'd be a good fit for the organization. I talked about how much sales experience I had, what type of sales I was conducting previously. So doing a little bit of a deeper dive. And again, asking her if there's any current positions within the Toronto office she's hiring for, and I'd be happy to chat about it. That sort of captures exactly what you want to be talking about when it comes to a hiring manager or somebody who's a director of talent acquisition like Carol is. Now, Let's talk about, again, why this message would work. So the reason why Salim's message or that initial message that Imad supposedly sent would be effective is everyone loves to talk about themselves. If you ask somebody a lot of questions, you'll make them feel special and needed. And for that, they'll like you. No one likes to hear another person talk. I can tell you a lot of people don't have the attention span to sit there and hear someone drone on and on. It can get very boring. Hopefully that's not the case when you're hearing me talk, but nonetheless, if you start asking someone questions, you probe a little bit, allow them to talk and share their story, they will appreciate that. What this is called is an informational interview. So you're cracking the door open. You're asking a couple questions about themselves, their personal career, and you're doing two things actually. You're figuring out if this is a career path and industry that you even want to be involved in. Secondly, you're making a connection with somebody who can help you in countless ways even if they're not the hiring manager. Salim reached out to me and I was not the hiring manager. I was just somebody on the team. I've had phone calls or coffee meetings and with people suddenly remembering that they're hiring for a role, you know, and would I like to come interview for it? Other times they either end with a suggestion of someone else to reach out to within the company, like, oh, my friend so-and-so Rebecca works in HR. Do you want to talk to her? Or even within the industry, hey, we're not hiring. My friend Jack works at this cool startup and they're hiring. Want his info? So just like that, you're building an internal champion, not only within that organization, but you're opening a door into the industry. They'd be happy to refer you all for what? Just because you heard them talk. 
So setting up the introductory call, now we're revisiting that conversation I had with Salim. A couple things to note before you even get to that introductory call. Ideally, you wanna have this done before you even reach out to the person, but know what the organization does and where they do it. Find out what you can about the person before the meeting. So just like an interviewer, we talked about doing a bit of research into the interviewer yesterday, right before you jump into an interview. It's the same thing here. You want to make a first impression. You want to make sure it's lasting in a positive light. So Salim reached out to me. So I told him, hey, Salim, that sounds great. Why don't you give me a ring tomorrow? What time works for you? He says, Ali, thank you for your prompt reply. I appreciate it. I truly appreciate the help. Tomorrow is my day off, so anytime works for me. Please let me know what time you prefer and what number I can reach you at. He said, no problem. Give me a call at my number. 10 a.m. would be best. He said, great. Looking forward. Have a great night. So you as well. Cheers. The meeting etiquette. Now that you have that introductory call, it's set up. This is what you want to do. You want to keep a few of your experiences at hand. So while the person is talking about their experience, you can talk to them and say, hey, yeah, absolutely. I've done this at so-and-so. So it's interesting to see that you're going through the same thing. Absolutely. Or I've had a similar experience at so-and-so, but please tell me a little bit more about yours. Anytime somebody name drops somebody in conversation. So what we talked about in the prior slide was talking about hey, my friend Jack is an HR at this company and they're hiring. Take a note of that name. Take a note of the title they tell you. Search it and on LinkedIn and connect with them at a later time. If this introductory meeting is in person, please make sure you're paying for the person's coffee. They are volunteering your, their time to talk to you for next to nothing. So make sure you're at least covering that coffee. It's just common courtesy. If it's virtual, the one thing I recommend is ask for their email so you can send them a little thank you note and also send them a small gift card, five, $10, something that'll cover a coffee. It's a little appreciative gesture. It will be well received and it'll build a, a positive feeling and foster that relationship with them so that you can get that internal reference. Now let's talk about content on LinkedIn. So post about your project, any relevant work activities or any initiatives you might've been involved in. So on the screen here, we start off with a post by Danielle, who's uh, thrilled to be joining the Max Gala Network team in the sponsorship, sponsorships and relationship management role. Through the efforts of volunteer, Max aims to recognize, reward, celebrate, and motivate high achievement, along with positive and productive contributions to society by Muslims in Canada. Thank you, Azur, for the opportunity. So one, this is something he was involved in, in a volunteer capacity. He posted about it because one, he's excited to get involved and also it gives him great content to post about on LinkedIn. It also gives people the opportunity to interact with him further. Now, if there's somebody on the Max team that I want to reference or have a reference with, I can reach out to Daniel and say, hey, listen, I understand you volunteered at Max. So-and-so runs Max. Do you mind putting a good word for me or do you mind putting me in touch with them? Or how'd you find your experience at Max? Now, also, if your organization is hiring, definitely post about it. So about a year ago, I made a post about SAP Canada hiring, and that was actually to backfill my role that I was leaving. So I talked about if you're interested in sales and working at some of the best run companies in Toronto, definitely send me a message, how long it takes on that. Uh, also, just post other content you're interested in. So way back about a year ago, Nike had made a commitment to furthering excellence within people of color specifically within sports to create an equitable environment for people of color. So I posted that link and I also said, as someone who's a sneaker enthusiast, Nike had a huge impact and a cultural impact while I was growing up. Happy to see one of my favorite brands take the right steps towards making a change. People love interacting with this type of content and reading something they're interested in. When I was at SAP, SAP was a huge partner at RBC. So when they were uh, working together to, um, to sort of promote financial literacy with OVO, I posted about it. I said, excited to see what our partners at RBC have in store with OVO. They launched an OVO summit of 2019 to the Canadian public for the very first time I was able to post it. Didn't get much interaction at the time of the screenshot, but that post did blow up. And also another initiative that I was involved in at SAP was actually handing out sneakers to, uh, to underprivileged children within the Toronto area. Uh, so I posted about it, how myself and one of my colleagues had the pleasure of, uh, of wrapping up that initiative and delivering the sneakers to uh, tender privileged children at Parkville Collegiate. I give a big shout out to everyone who was on my team and whoever helped out. I also tagged the photographer at the time and a couple other tags. So people love listening to, to stories like this and, and interacting with this content. So 
Definitely post about relevant content, any initiatives or work activities that you're involved in, or any projects you might be taking on. It is something for you to post on, on LinkedIn, and it also shows you're a well-rounded individual. You have something outside of work. You might have something interesting going on at work, even outside of your role. Definitely also interact and comment on posts from your, uh, your connections. Not only does it increase visibility to your profile, it can also help somebody else out as well. So Nawid about a couple of weeks ago had posted something on his profile. So I had uh, commented on it. I talked about how I never had a chance to be directly mentored by Gladys, but she was beyond helpful every step of the way when I had strange integration or technical questions. Glad to see you both doing well. Now, it interacted with this post. It brought visibility to my profile and anybody else who might be commenting, who might be a hiring manager, and it outlined how I sort of had experience working with both of them. On any other post, a friend of mine, Dave Elliott, he talked about this is so awesome when he was, uh, that was in reference to the sneaker post that I made. But again, it's the type of content people want to see. He interacted with it. That also gave people visibility into his profile and putting your name in front of someone who might not normally know where you are or who you are. Uh, the third screenshot is sort of uh, a couple of senior leaders on uh, a couple different teams talking about, um, you know, I remember our interview was, uh, this was expected, crushing it, congratulations. Uh, Brian Veloso at SAP concurred talking about very much deserve, you know, like this is a, a post that somebody made about receiving an award in their organization. So the work you two are doing to connect our team to the community is inspiring. I appreciate you both. So not only does posting allow for people uh, to, to comment on your post and like your post, increase visibility for yourself. When you interact with their post, it develops a further relationship as well. It's a social media platform. It should be treated as such within confines of professionalism. Now, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but LinkedIn is huge for recruiters. There is actually a product from LinkedIn that's called LinkedIn Recruiter View. Now, what that allows them to do is build out lists and certain search parameters to find uh, the talent they need for certain roles within their organization. So we talked about it yesterday. Recruiters will work with organizations to hire specific talent to fill their needs. Recruiting agencies typically use LinkedIn, and about 90% of their candidates are sourced from LinkedIn. When you connect with a, a recruiter, they will pitch your profile to the client based on the conversation with you, and they will help you prepare for next steps. So on June 7th, somebody named Blake had reached out to me saying I had an impressive background. His client was Palette. Uh, they're looking for someone like me. They're expanding their team based on growth, hiring an employer partnerships lead, yada, yada, talking about a couple of things. And ideally, we can aim to chat tomorrow. Here's how we can chat to look at time. This is typically what a message from a recruiter will look like when they're looking to fill a role. This is the initial opportunity for you, one, to learn about that opportunity that they're presenting, and two, for them to learn about you and learn if you both be a good fit for that organization or not. Now, the first screenshot we have is from someone who reached out to me again, and I had taken a bite. I said, sure, let's find out about this organization. So the person said, hi, Ali, I just responded to your application on LinkedIn. Thank you for your interest in the opportunity with our client. We've shortlisted you for the role, and there's a link here for an invitation to a video interview, which should take about 10 minutes to complete. Now, what this means is out of the pool of candidates that they had reached out to, they had shortlisted me, meaning they had said that out of 20 applicants, maybe two or three fit the bill perfectly for the role that we have. And she invited me to the next steps of the interview process, which takes about 10 minutes to complete. It was a video interview. Now, couple phone calls later back and forth, uh, working with recruiters. This one thing you do wanna keep in mind is you do want to keep them updated as much as possible because they are working for you. They are presenting your profile to their client and they are convincing the client that you're the best fit for this role if they have a genuine interest in you. They also help prepare you for the next step. So a lot of back and forth later, I reached out to Shiona. I let her know that, uh, you know, I had the initial conversation with um, with the hiring manager. This was a couple of cycles or a couple uh, interview process steps into the interview process rather. So I let her know and she said, hi, Ali, thanks so much for the details. Neither Linda nor myself has spoken to Bob Ross today. So I'll try to get you some feedback as soon as possible. This was at 1.30 PM. I thanked her for her time, let her know it sounded great. At 2.58, she reached out and she said, hi, Ali, spoken to Bob. Looks like you did a great job. I believe they will be putting an offer together for you and Asif will reach out directly to Linda with the details. 
uh, and either Linda or myself will then reach out to discuss with you. Fantastic job, congratulations. So of course, this was possible because Shiona had guided me throughout every step of the interview process and I worked with her directly, letting her know sort of my feedback from the interview steps, um, what sort of feedback I had received from the hiring managers who were conducting the interview. And then Shiona, who's a recruiter on file, she went to sort of bat for me and um, ensure that I was one who was selected for the role. Any questions so far before we wrap it up? I'm assuming that's going to be a no. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. I appreciate your time. Inshallah, everything will uh, go according to your plan. You'll be able to find a role within your desired industry. Again, if there is any questions at any time, please feel free to reach out to the executive team at Mehdi Youth. They will direct your questions to me. And in turn, I'll be happy to help. Jazakallah khair.